everyone, welcome to Sharing Life Issues with Her Excellency Hajia Amina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. If you've not subscribed, can you kindly click on the red subscription button? Be sure to click on the notification button so that when your baddest is here, remember I'm your plug? When I'm here, you guys can know that we are a YouTube life, or if we do drop a very meaningful post, you'll be the first one to get those impactful message all right so feel free to click on that and also invite your family and friends to like and share our post we love you thank you so much for always coming so i'll be letting you hear from the victim on today's episode like i said earlier on i will be letting you hear the interview with the victim this happened in america or would i say the victim is in america but it happened in nigeria so uh we just want you to start hearing from them so that way you know that those things are happening because sometimes some people are like is this scripted what's going on here we do not tell stories that are lies here we do tell real life stories and we do make sure that we investigate to know if they are real before we bring them out here thank you so much while i click on that so you all can listen to it. It is in Yoruba. Like we always say, itaye gidi, la barin duni anagaskia, ahu kondu madu, the real life stories. So I would let her talk. And after that, I can then translate everything. She was interviewed in Yoruba. So I will be translating it after she's done talking. So I'm just going to play it for you right now. <laughs> So, 
Kalife Kalo she gomani and you bear gone in the money gun we saw again. The mask of bad loju. Gun we saw on top of a bomb in the car. Only at one job, only at one job, so I can't catch you back on top of my young and coming you. One job. No bother, Bummy Fock on my book, call you book, all of Bummy Fock on your back bow book. Looking away, I'm more not to let you bang it. All bow money. ก็คนเนี่ยก็เบมีก็ใส่ก็ตัวคนเนี่ยนี่ไงมันเบมีอะไรก็มันไม่เบมีก็ไม่เออสิจัดบาบาลาบานีโอ้โคบอนี่คน
And the lady was like, no, you're pregnant. And she was like, I'm not pregnant. So she brought out, the lady brought out her breast and pressed it and the milk was coming out from it. Then she was like, you're pregnant and we don't see you with any man. So who impregnated you? Are you married? Then she said, I'm not married, but she couldn't tell them that it was her brother. She said, I stated to my brother that they asked me who uh, baby it is. I don't know what to do. The brother was like, you dare not tell anyone. They, then she went back home. She told her mother and the mother said, Benusong. Benusong means shut up. And she slapped her and started hitting her and told her she was lying. When the mother refused to believe her, the mother and the brother took her away from, uh, from that vicinity so people would not see her again. They took her to some other place, some other village or whatever. I can't recall where they took her to, but they took her somewhere out of where they were living. And they collected money from an old man. And the old man is, uh, the, she stated an evil guy that was really old and he was not able to function with a woman. So I guess she said something of Pobo or Kobo or something like that. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Basically, somebody who cannot, who does not have the function to sleep with a woman. So he was old. So the mother collected money from him and kind of like did a trade by battle with him like she would be his wife and she should stay there with her child when she, um, obviously she's pregnant, so she should stay there with him. So she stated that she was there with him. She gave birth to this child and the child could not function. She said, there was nothing I could do. I had to run away from there because she could not cope. I mean, you're with somebody who is really older than you, maybe grandfather, the way she described it. And again, he could not, you know, function sexually. So definitely she ran off from there. She said she started the tree. Uh, she started selling rice and all that. She would put the baby on her back and go around. And the brother found her again and the mother and another wahala started from there. They started cursing her. Why did you leave and all sort of things. The mother who is supposed to protect her also was there abusing her. So at the long run, she traveled abroad. She traveled abroad, but the child was with her auntie. So now this child was with the aunt in Nigeria while she was in the United States of America. She stated that the child is 20 something years, but looks like a 10 year old. That I believe what she's describing is someone who has like a HDHD. So I guess the child does not function well. So she was saying that she was narrating that the child cannot get married. The child cannot do anything meaningful with her life, that the child cannot, um, cannot work, cannot, that did not, that she's not going to school, that she's seen the picture. But where are we going with this? I guess this found, they saw a vision for her that there's something that, you know, was done before, but she stated while she was narrating her story, that that old man that they got married together was saying that, that he has caused her because the mother took his money. So he, I mean, somebody would sit down there and swear for you because I mean, that's why sometimes we say karma, karma, karma. So I guess he said something, something bad would happen to her. And now something bad is happening and they're telling her to retrace what happened, what had happened to her. So this is somebody in America that now is dealing with all these things because obviously maybe something came up. So I'm begging you. I don't even know what to say. This broke my heart. I was supposed to air this uh, when I it was sent in our inbox, but I couldn't because I kept thinking, how could a mother, a biological mother do this to our child? What, where are we going? Where is this world going? I believe they are, uh, or they were her kids. You need to sit down and love your kids equally. I get it. Some might say, how the hell would you love your kids equally? Well, no matter what, what if I was that mother, God would never let it happen to me. But what would I have done in that situation? 
she should have questioned the child, the son, to find out what's going on, or at least take her to the hospital to get a DNA. Is it that bad that you don't even trust your own daughter? Ben Usong, do you like shut up and you're hitting her and doing all sorts of things? Now she had a baby. Listen, I'm not here to, to um, say that she was supposed to have an abortion. But how the hell would you have a child for your brother? And the way she was describing it, I guess, probably they didn't have enough rooms. Some might say, yes, they didn't have enough rooms. Obviously, they were poor at that time. Yes. But we as parents too need to be vigilant. If you have female kids and you can afford it, I'm begging you, please do not put them in the same room. No matter what. And always make sure you are a friend to your child. Let them feel free to talk to you. I want it to be that. When they get in trouble, the first person they will say, I want to talk to my parent. I want to talk to my mother. I want to talk to my father. I'm not a stranger out there. I train my kids that always listen. But remember, no matter what, I'll be there for you. So never ever lie to me. I want it when something happens for my child to say, call my mother. So in this instance, the person who is supposed to protect her is not even listening to her. She's not. She did not listen to her. That's abuse right there. So women like this end up with abusers out there because she's been abused at home. So if she goes out with another guy now, she wouldn't mind being in those abusive relationships. She would not question anything. She would not question any red flag. She would just stay put. If her husband says shut up, she will shut up. If her husband say your leg is uh, crooked, she'll say yes. Put your leg in the basket, she'll put it. Listen, I'm not here to teach people to disrespect their husbands, but I hope you're getting my message because I just want to clarify. Because I know some people here are here to criticize things. However, we need to start waking up. Things are happening. Sometimes you post things and people are like, this is scripted. Nothing is scripted. Those things have been happening since the generations of our forefathers. But our African culture, they tell you, do not speak, do not say anything because of the shame, because of the uh, stigmatization. How long are we going to continue in this instance? How long? How long? Tell me. This is taboo. We should not tolerate things like this. He was even going to do it to the auntie because she was stating there that you could, you know, she's lost her self-esteem. Somebody living in America, she has lost her self-esteem. Sometimes they say you, you've traveled and at least you can gain some other things. This one does not, by speaking, I could tell she does not even have a self-esteem. Because she was just like, oh, you, if you want to confirm, I can give you my auntie's number to confirm because my auntie said he wanted to do it to her to thank God he didn't do it. So for her to be saying that, we should confirm. You need to confirm with my aunt because my auntie stated that he wanted, my brother wanted to do this to me, but you were the victim that he got. He was not successful with me. Haba, dan Allah, This is too much. Hmm? It's like my body is just doing me somehow. I don't even know where to, where to end this. Huh? With the useless mother, that's why the other time I tell you, I always tell you that some women just carry children. Nine months does not mean you're a mother. There are some people that are out there that don't have kids, that are crying for kids every day, that are real mothers. So I'm begging you guys, start paying attention to your children. I'm begging you. And give them the care and love and understanding that they need. Educate your kids. Educate your kids. Believe it or not, I have a 12-year-old. I have a 9-year-old. I have started educating them with things like this. When I'm saying things like this, I don't mean you should go and start telling a child, oh, somebody is fucking somebody or somebody is seeing somebody naked. They have the way that you can do it gradually with their level of understanding, with their age.
you have to start telling them okay this is bad touch this is real touch mommy cannot touch here daddy cannot touch here yes daddy cannot touch here i said that yes mommy cannot touch that i said that because we've seen some parents that are the abusers themselves they are the perpetrators themselves some people are you just do crazy shit that you and i don't even think about so for those of you that always think people are writing a script or everything you see on the internet is scripted pray that you don't fall victim <laughs> when you fall victim then you will believe there are some things out there that might be scripted but believe me it was something that happened that was a real life story that's why it was scripted so people don't just feel free to say this happened to me or some people don't fucking care if it is their story but they just want to pass the message out there that's why they're not coming to say oh it's my story so you better start listening and you better start learning from things okay may the almighty allah continue to guide and protect us may the almighty god continue to protect us i love you all and i'll be seeing you on our next episode thanks and jazakallah khaira peace